Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, the most viewed drummer on YouTube, Casey Cooper. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, rock and rollers? Rich Redman here. It's another episode of The Rich Redman Show coming to you from Music City, my midtown loft here right by Music Row in Music City, USA. And Jim, a little further south, Spring Hill area, Tennessee. And I, before we get into our guest today, I just want to thank everyone for your support. When Jim and I came up with this idea to have a crazy show, well, first we had to come up with a title, and then we had to find out the direction, and then there's so much to do. And big thanks to my friend Nick Raffini of Revoice Media. He's got a great podcast called The Drummer's Resource, over 500 episodes of interviewing the world's greatest drummers. And he, he kind of consulted with us and helped us save a little bit of sweat equity and time to get this thing rolling. But we appreciate the fact that there's already like 74 episodes and you guys are consuming these things in your own way and you've left us great five-star reviews. We so appreciate it. If you want to give us some feedback or just some praise or you want us to read one of your emails on the air, on the air, I've got an email address for you. It's the Rich Redman Show at gmail.com. And as always, thank you to the School of Rock for sponsoring the show. Let's get into this. Now, our next guest, I met him early last year. He had me down to his studio. It was an incredible, incredible thing. He is the most subscribed to drummer on the internet, over 2.5 million subscribers and over a half a billion video views. My friend, Casey Cooper, how you doing, buddy? Hey, yeah. man, I, I am good. Uh, excited to be here. Thank you for having me. That's a beautiful studio, man. Oh, thank you. I mean, I you, I, it's, it's, had, it's been graced by your presence, so uh, oh, that man. makes it more beautiful. Well, and you know, I appreciate you reaching out to me because you have such a huge reach on the internet and you're doing so many great things for drummers. And last year, you had this um, world's largest online drum collaboration and you, you called me. I appreciate that. And you had our friend Quibis Potgeiter, I, if, I'm, if, I am, <laughs> if I am mispronouncing this. Cobus, Quibus, I love you. I have hugged you many times, and I will hug you again, and I will apologize in person. You had Orlando Drummer. You had Amanda Muse. You had Jared Fogg from Drumeo. You had David Ryalf. You had uh, Juan Carlito Mendoza and Steven Taylor, who we've had as a guest on this very show. And it was so amazing. And if you haven't seen the video, check it out. It's one of the first videos you'll see on your page. Yeah. Now, and I was asking you about the address on your page. Can you explain the, the, um, the landing page with the threes? <laughs> so uh, it's pronounced Cooper Drummer, uh, although many people come up to me, they're like, oh, hey, you're, you're Coop 3R, Drum 3R. And I'm like, well, you know, that's close. That's, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's kind of a silly thing, but it's also kind of a branding thing. Uh, and I just, I started it out way back when, when I started my YouTube page. Uh, when you're trying to create a brand, you want to be able to be found. And uh, when it comes to my brand, uh, if you search for the word drummer, uh, on YouTube back before I had videos, you, you certainly wouldn't find me. And if you search for Cooper or for Casey Cooper, you certainly wouldn't have found me. And so I wanted to have something a little bit unique that allowed people to, uh, to recognize that it was one of my videos and also recognize my channel and maybe remember it. And so I, I went with the threes instead of the E's, kind of a gamer thing as well. I, I like to play video games. I don't do it a lot anymore, but yeah. Um, so it was just kind of one of those things where I was like, I'm going to put this in there and it'll help people find me on, uh, on YouTube and differentiate so they can search for a Coop, Cooper with a three or drummer with a three and it'll pull up my channel and they'll be able to watch all of the different videos that I have more easily um, and to be found more easily. I, I love the fact that you're you're still not you're you're in your tender twenties. I don't even think you've hit the big three zero yet, <laughs> and you've been at this for a long time. And you whippersnappers are always talking about branding, Jim. Do we ever? I never remember like you know that word coming up when we were growing up. Well, uh, it did in marketing circles because that's where I came up with the radio. Right. You know, for cor corporations did mar did branding. Uh, people yeah. did not. Yeah, but the you were way, what were you studying in school? Because didn't you go to Georgia State University? Is that in Atlanta? 
Yes, so Georgia State is downtown Atlanta. Uh, the other big school in downtown Atlanta is Georgia Tech. Uh, definitely different schools, but uh, um, I uh, I went there. I had a few different things I, I thought I wanted to study. So I started with uh, performance and um, decided performance wasn't the right path for me. Uh, and then I was looking into recording tech because I wanted to learn to be an audio engineer. Um, I I personally believe that being as well rounded as you can be on like in those areas just allows for more opportunity, um, especially in today's you know, modern drum world where you create videos and you put out content and things like that, like being able to do the audio engineering and be able to do all that is a big thing. And so I, I thought that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and then I kind of landed on music business a little bit. Um, <laughs> but to be honest, uh, my YouTube channel kind of took off and I just started doing what it was that I wanted to be doing. And the, the whole school thing ended up taking more of a, a back seat than, uh, than a front seat. But I learned, I will say that I learned a lot in those years from experience playing in the Georgia State marching band and the basketball bands and working with other musicians and playing gigs and being downtown and just having diverse people around me. Um, but uh, I definitely also learned, you know, a lot in the different classes and things that I were, that I was a part of. Um, can't, you can't discount education, even though I didn't end up with a degree, I certainly wouldn't tell someone else that uh, they shouldn't get one. Um, it's not, a, it's not necessary, but it's also not, you know, it's not a bad thing to have for sure. I yeah. wish I had, I wish I had it. <laughs> well, you Just don't you, get into debt over it, right? Yeah, exactly. For sure. That's, that is a downside. Um, when you can, I mean, as a musician, you can pretty much succeed without one if you wanted to just not teaching jobs and stuff. Well, my, yeah, my band makes fun of me all the time. They're like, Rich, uh, how do you feel about that uh, seven and a half years of higher education that you put yourself through? You're, we all have high school degrees and you're in our band. <laughs> it's not money well spent, is it? Um, but so are you still from time to time playing with the with the marching band and the, the basketball band? Did I read that incorrectly? <laughs> uh, well, not like on a, uh, you know, real scheduled uh, thing where like every year I'm a part of it, but they do call me up and they ask me to come out for special events. Uh, mm. It's funny you mentioned that because uh, I'm, I'm playing the, the homecoming uh homecoming game in a couple of weeks with Georgia State uh, as a special thing since because of the uh, the pandemic and all that they have to limit the fans and so we're, we're doing something a little bit different and doing like a drum off with the the drummer that is there but it's one of my favorite like favorite places to play drums especially the basketball band uh, so last year I was at the NCAA tournament with them uh, because they're they're all their other drummers were sick or couldn't go and so they called me they're like hey can you come fill in because you know all the tunes and I'm like yes I will never forget those tunes <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the curious. The fight song just plays in my head, you know. You know, I've played it with a, as like a featured drum set artist with a, with some massive marching bands, like four hundred pieces, right? And so there's like a little rock band at the front of the stage, and they kind of wheel you out in a cart and everything. And isn't the the kicker the um, the acoustic thing with the marching band because you're trying to lock down the time, but you're hearing like the flugelhorns and the tubas, and there's a delay, and you okay. just kind of have to put your big boy pants on and go. Here it is. That, uh, that, that made a man out of me for sure when it comes to timing, uh, listening back and having to lock in with the drum line. And we played in the Georgia Dome, which had some of the worst acoustics for a dome. And uh, I mean, there were so many times where you're like hearing the echo from the front of the drum line from behind. And you're just like, I mean, I had a microphone, a SM57 aimed backwards straight towards the band and I would have headphones on and I would be blocking out everything. And the band's not supposed to listen to you because you're in the in front of them too. So it's 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 all mm. a mess, but it, it's fun though. It's difficult, but it's good. Yeah, coordinating with the drum, ma the drum majors so that they're with you. It's that whole thing, you know, checking her the egg. Oh yeah. Well, have you seen those videos where they do the mass drumming? Like 50 drummers playing one song? Oh yeah, yeah. It was yeah, like, like the to fly uh, by the Foo Fighters and stuff mm -hmm. like that. They actually I, have a they have a blinking light to keep everybody <laughs> on tempo. <laughs> I uh, I actually got to be a part of that. Uh, so they're they're called the Rockin' One Thousand now, um, and it's like a thousand piece band. Uh, the day that I was there, we we officially broke the the Guinness World Record for biggest uh, band at a live performance. We played like eighteen songs, and we did it in Frankfurt, Germany. But uh, they actually also have wireless uh, headphones for everybody now that has the click in the ears, and it's it's the craziest thing I've ever been a part wow. of. Wow. 
you, you can see that video on my YouTube channel. It's got like a few million views because when people see it for the first time, they're like, that is just a crazy, like it, there's the, and even the video cannot show you truly what it was like to stand in front of 150 drummers, just all playing the same thing. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine <laughs> that? Yeah, oh my God. Well, well, that's a cool thing to be involved in. And I mean, and your channel is so robust. I mean, there's covers, there's lessons, how to's there's collaborations you there's like you go you go live a lot there's contests and giveaways i mean you even did a make a wish um yeah i did one of those for a young man and, and we're like text buddies now you know and oh and man young man named cameron shannon that had to feel great taking him to pearl and getting him a drum set tell us about that yeah so i mean uh I get a lot of emails, but when I got an email that said make a wish on it, you know, you click on that email and I, I couldn't believe it. Cause it, like the, the idea that someone could choose anything and they chose to, they wanted to hang out with you as their wish. Like, I mean, it, you, you know, that feeling, but like, yeah. to me, I, I like, I teared up the first time I read the email. I was just like sitting there like bawling my eyes out, like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is, so I got to do something crazy. Uh, and so I called up Pearl and you know, they're some of the best people on the planet and they, you know, they love, people and musicians and drummers and so that when I proposed the idea they were all for it and so the idea was to just you know make him the rock star for the day. I mean, Rich, you know what it's like to be an artist and to, you know, go to a drum company and they like, you know, take you out to dinner and they yeah. show you the new drums and like make you feel like you're the best thing on the planet. Well, because you are, but oh, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that's, that's how we wanted to make the kid feel. And uh, it was, it was so cool. He, I, I can't remember exactly what it was that he uh, he deals with. I know some it was like some epilepsy and a few other things, but like he doesn't uh, he doesn't emote very well, and so it was really cool to uh, to see him like you know have some reaction even when like her my, the parents told me they're like he probably won't even smile he probably won't even laugh like wow. he'll just like he's not going to make a face or anything and so but everybody there was just so loving and caring and we got to get him a drum set and uh i did my fire drumming thing outside for him and it was it was just a it was a blast yeah you're like okay you're going home with one of these drum sets what do you want and he was like what what lavar <laughs> hightower was his name yeah. Yeah. That's right. Such a cool Do they kid. have the can they select the drum set they want? They can get anything? Well, we had two drum sets in the room, uh, two different finishes, and uh, he got to pick which finish. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember back. I believe they were both uh, Decade Maple, uh, so it's like a six-ply oh, nice. maple shell kit. Yeah. Um, one of Pearl's like affordable maple series drums, and they, I mean they're great, especially for the price point. So it was really cool to to get him such a such a great kit. Very yeah, cool. I mean, it, it, people complain. They, they say all the time, you know, like, what, what's the what's the uh, point of entry in drums? I'm like, well, you're looking at probably six hundred bucks, and then you see some, hear some people. They're like, well, we got a house kit, but you know, it's just a Pearl Export. I'm like, dude, a Pearl Export or a Vision series? I mean, I think my friends at DW would, they'd be like, yeah. I mean, they're yeah. everybody's making such great stuff. You put some fresh heads on a Pearl Export. You put just some SM57s on them. You're golden. Yep. Yeah. I, I've spent a lot of time on my YouTube channel really trying to show people that you do not need a $5,000 drum set to sound good, you know? And, and I'm not saying that, like, don't dream and don't go out and get a $5,000 drum set. Like, I think that's the, you know, you move up the path. But, sure. like, you know, when you start out with a budget of $2,500, you don't need to spend $2,500 on the drums and then have nothing left over sim for cymbals. You can't tune uh, a cymbal, but you can tune a drum. And so yeah. I, I've really, like, enjoyed showing off things like Pearl Exports or Vision. In fact, I have a vision kit in my live room right now that I just uh, threw some heads on and was playing. But um, it like that uh, the ability to get a affordable drum set and make it sound awesome is something that I, I spend a lot of time trying to show people because I, I know what it feels like to look at somebody who has a really nice drum set and think like, oh man, you know, I need that or else I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be as good as that guy or I'm not gonna sound as good as that guy. And that's right. that's such a huge misconception. I mean, Rich, you came in here and like you know you you sat down with my igniter snare and you made that thing sound like a thousand dollar snare drum the way. Oh. You, that you played it because it's, I mean, it's a great snare, not saying it's not, but like, you know, it's not an expensive snare, but the way that the player plays and the way that you approach the instrument, I mean, you get a great sound out of whatever you're playing on. You could be hitting pots and pans and it'd sound good. Let's do it. Let's get the pots and pans. Well, I mean, yeah. I appreciate, I remember playing that drum and going, what is this? And you're like, this is my signature igniter snare. Like I helped design this thing. And I'm like, what's the price? Is it like, a, like 150 or something? Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a guy. What? I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> that is really, really. So where did that idea come from? Did you pitch that to Pearl and say like, Hey, I want, I, if I'm going to have a signature drum, I want everybody to be able to afford it. Was that uh, the- <laughs> actually, I, I did not pitch any of that to Pearl. They came to me with it because I, I mean, not to say that I don't think that it makes marketing sense. It does make marketing sense, but I like, I was thinking, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 years down the road, I might have a snare drum for myself, but I'm not like, there's so many people on the Pearl artist roster that I believe deserve to have a a drum before I have a drum that I was not going to be the one to be like, Hey guys, uh, I really think I should have a snare drum, you know, like, but when they came to me, they, they, they had the igniter idea. They had the, uh, the price point thing and uh, all of it. I was like, man, you, you summed up what I believe in this snare drum. And, uh, we just worked on some of the design details as far as like the, you know, the finish, what it looks like. And, um, and it was, it was actually a pretty simple process because, they just did such a good job creating a great, great drum. I didn't, uh, I didn't have to throw too much in there because I didn't, you know, I didn't want to raise the price. I wasn't going to be like, actually, no, I don't like that wood choice. Where can we, you know, it's just, it was, it was great. Oh, it sounds great. Whack. I mean, I'm at a point in my career where I'm kind of like thinning the herd. If I'm not using the drum, I'm trying to get rid of it. But I mean, that's one I would pick up, man. I mean, that's really good. Don't say. Is it? <laughs> you're, you're, you're looking to offload some drums, aren't you? <laughs> so Casey, Jim, we're both from Connecticut. Yeah. He's five years younger. We're longtime friends. He came up in the biz self-taught. Mm-hmm. Who were your guys? Did you, did you take lessons early on? Because I think you picked up a first pair of sticks when you were six yeah, so uh, I picked up sticks when I was about six. I found some of my dad's old sticks. And uh, it's funny, every single time I tell this story, I end up being quoted in a magazine saying my dad taught me everything that I know. Uh, <laughs> and not that I, not that my dad was not hugely influential and is hugely influential, but uh, he's not actually a drummer. He tried to play drums as a kid, just didn't really ever get into it. Um, and But he had a pair of old drumsticks in the attic and I like found them and I was just like messing around with it. And that's when my parents were like, oh, you know, maybe he's interested in drums. And so I got my first kit uh, around eight and I took a few lessons, but um, I'm, I think just the way that I am as like my personality and stuff, I like to teach myself. I like to like read and I like to learn and I like to just kind of figure it out. And so also, you know, we, we weren't a super wealthy family. So paying for lessons was uh, something that like, we just, you know, if it didn't have to be budgeted for, we didn't not to say that's a good thing because I, I definitely think having a great instructor is, is very important. But um, I grew up just, you know, my great instructors were watching people like Neil Peart, you know, Mm. like uh, when I was a kid, I thought I wanted to be just like Neil. And then um, I realized first off that I just, I'm not that, not that kind of player. Uh, But secondly, like I, I found myself moving more towards the kind of drumming of like Dave Grohl or like yourself, Rich, where it's just like, it's more like feel and in the pocket and just like jamming. And I mean, on my videos, I'm, I'm often overplaying the song as, as people will tell me if they, they don't understand what the videos are about. Uh, but like, that's, you know, that's just for fun. That's just to show people like, Hey, you know, look at, look at this, let, you know, get behind yeah. the kit and have fun. But like, well, what, what was on the radio when you, so you're like a child of the nineties, literally. Yeah. I mean, you were in a teenager in the 90s. You were a teenager in the early aughts. Um, yep. But what was on the radio and who, who were your big guys? So was it like Grohl and... Yeah, so I, I mean, Grohl was a huge uh, inspiration to me. But I actually, because... And this is where my dad ties in. Like, my dad has like... 4,000 CDs and they're all like, you know, seventies rock. And so I, not all of them, he has a very diverse uh, collection, but like he, when I was growing up, I was listening to ACDC and I was listening to Led Zeppelin and I was listening to Soundgarden and I was listening to um, Rush and I was listening to Queen and I was listening yeah. to like, I mean, you know, uh, Bonham and uh, Grohl and uh, Neil Peart and, um, um, another big one, uh, Roger Taylor. I absolutely the big love beat, Taylor's man. Play. That's all yeah. big beat stuff. You know, a lot of space, big drums, big cymbals. What was your input th- there, Jim? What do you seem like you wanted to ask Casey something? Oh, he was just talking about Neil before, and I just had. Uh, I said the thing, the appeal for me for Neil was the faces he would make, or the lack of faces <laughs> he would make. I wish yeah, I could make I, a I, lack of faces. That'd be great. He, he just he was stoic and stone faced every time he played. 
Absolute robot. And I think that's like mm-hmm. when if I were to describe him, his the his immense technicality came off almost robotic to a certain extent and like a lot of what he was playing he'd like do it i feel like because he was bored he's just so good that like oh i might as well add some triplets on the ride even though you like don't even hear him on the track (laughs) but it's just like why not because i got the chops to do it for days and yeah so uh yeah i mean such a such a crazy player i i he's one of my favorite like dvds to watch is go back and watch his the the pert uh dvds was what are these CDs progress? and DVDs you yes. are talking of? Yeah, work in <laughs> progress is a good one. Oh, a work in progress one. is like mm-hmm. I mean, when when uh, when I found out about his passing, I the first thing I did is went back and grabbed that and uh, and watched it. It was tough to watch him play traditional in that in that mm-hmm. video series, you know? Yeah, because he was he wasn't it wasn't natural to him, in my opinion. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, uh, just imagine Jim. Casey, yes. if we had the School of Rock when we were coming up, it might have been around when you were coming up, Casey, but they're the sponsor of our show. I'm a product of music education. I can't say enough great things about the School of Rock because it gets you involved in an ensemble. It gets you in a, the kids in a band right away. And some kids just get bored. They're just like, oh, five-stroke roll, seven-stroke roll. I want to play a Dave Grohl song. And that's what the School of Rock does. It teaches you to play drums and bass and guitar and keyboards and sing and work as part of an ensemble. There's over 200 50 locations and our friends Angie and Kelly McCray, they have two amazing locations here, two of the best in Nashville. We have Nashville and Franklin. There's soon to be a location in Mount Juliet. Parents, you want to get your kids involved in a team sport, the team sport called music. I got two email addresses for you. Jim, drum roll. Nashville at schoolofrock.com and Franklin at schoolofrock.com. I feel like I'm really on the radio with this thing now. That's good. No, you, Jim is. If you guys are just consuming this with your ears, Jim is coming from a brand new office. He just bought an office building, and we have to christen that place when it gets safe. We'll come in with the, the you know, the New Year's things, the, the ratchet. <laughs> sure. Yeah, right. Well, it's going to be great. You know, speaking of Neil, going back to that, uh, Casey, do you remember where you were? It's going to be one of those things. Do you remember where you were when you found out about uh, his passing? I was I was at my house, which is why I immediately ran downstairs and grabbed the the DVD and just like couldn't stop watching it. <laughs> we were quote on the air yeah. with uh, with Cole. Remember uh, the episode with Cole? Oh, Cole Marcus. Do you know Cole, Cole Marcus, Marcus, that young drumming lion from California? Really good friends with Greg Bissonette, and he um, he does a little acting, and he's been in a lot of commercials, and he won. Um, America's most talented kid or something like that, like 10 oh, years wow. ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I think I have heard of him. I, I don't, I'm not super familiar, but I, I think I've heard that name. for Great sure. kid. Great. He, yeah. He was a great kid when he first came in and we just had a really great time with him. But as soon as, I mean, you could see my reaction. I actually took a snippet of it and put it up on the socials of my reaction when I read the news. Cause I, you know, whenever we're talking about different things, I'm always looking at show prep, if you will. And it came up in the Facebook feed and you could see the reaction, the visceral reaction on my face. And then I broke it to them on, I think we took a break, right? Yeah. Rich. And then I said, well, Hey, you know, Neil just died. That kid just took his headphones off. It looked like he was about to just break into tears. Yeah. Wow. Like he was, he was devastated. He's a deep kid, man. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, what a wonderful body of work that that gentleman has left us. And I yep. know so many friends that were dear friends uh, with him and this, everybody had just wonderful things to say. Thanks, got- 2020. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? If people want to check out the YouTube channel, one of the, like one of them that it comes up, and you could tell me if this is the one with the most one of the most views. But "Burn," which is an LA Golding <laughs> song, and you have the Fire Sticks, twenty nine million views. What made Ooh. you say to yourself, "I'm going to like uh, light my sticks on fire"? Seems dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I've always had a passion for fire and a passion for drumming, and I really just wanted to uh, to combine the two. And when I say passion for fire, I don't mean that I like you know go out and uh, I'm not an ar- arsonist or anything, but uh, I just, you know, Passion, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just, I don't think fire's cool. And uh, I, I did get in trouble as a kid. Uh, one time I used a magnifying glass and uh, like uh, set a bunch of hay on fire. So Ooh. I guess, you Dude, know, I that's was, I was all a mini you've done? arsonist. Yeah. I tried to <laughs> say a tractor beetle. once. Yeah. I but, burned uh, a beetle with a magnifying glass. That's, did you? Oh, no. No, that's, that's great. Never did that, Rich? I never did that, but I was, that's, that's, that's where I thought Casey was going. I tried, <laughs> I tried to blow up a tractor once. There used to be, there was a big open meadow by my house. 
And we, they used to leave their uh, tractors. They're old school, like 1920s era tractors. And we used to stick like matches down the gas tanks and stuff. It was Jeez, awful. Jim. Wow. I know. I know. Just, yeah, I'm glad stuff. that's past the statute of limitations or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was many, many 30 some odd years ago. But I mean, how does that gag work? I mean, it's like, aren't you burning up your plastic drum heads and metal symbols? Like I'm looking at this going, oh my God. Uh, I do replace a lot of drum heads after I do the performances. But uh, I mean, it, it's just like my my drumming is not like... I'm not here to be like more technically talented than the next person. And I don't mean that in a way that like I could even necessarily be technically talented than the next person. Like I, I believe that I am a drummer for people to, I want to inspire people to play the drums. I don't want to be the guy that's like so good that like you watch him and you think like, I'll never be that good. I want to be the guy that people watch and think like, wow, that's so cool. Let me try that. Maybe I can go and practice it. Maybe I can go and play it. And part of it's just the fact that like, I'm not as technically talented as some of those other guys out there that, that are that great. But another part of it is just, I have a passion for uh, just playing the drums and making people smile and making people dance and making people want to get behind the kit and try it. And so yeah. the whole fire drumming thing is just one of those like gimmicky things that I wanted to do that I felt like would make people smile. And it's, it's really cool when I do like halftime shows at basketball games or, you know, things of that nature where like people are watching and like, I'm doing like, I'm just playing a drum solo and you know, there's lots of people that are into it that are into music and are into drums. But the cool part is when I break out the fire sticks and all those people that were scrolling on their phones because they're not that interested in drums or music are now standing on their feet, like filming and like, throwing their hands in the air. They're like, whoa, this is crazy. And yeah, it's like, like the gladiators in old Rome. It's like, break out the tiger, release the tiger. <laughs> I mean, and, and there's a lot of passion there. Boom, boom, whap, boom, boom, whap, boom, boom, whap, boom, boom, go, 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 boom. I mean, but just like serving it up with like extreme attitude. And, you know, and I looked on your, on the page and you have like a mantra. Your goal is to provide entertainment and encourage everyone to work hard, dream hard, dream drum hard, dream big, and have fun playing the drums. I think it's like the old Jerry Maguire thing. I think that anybody that's doing anything should have some sort of a mantra or purpose statement. Yeah. I mean, it, I just, I really believe that, you know, anybody could have ended up where I've ended up on the whole YouTube thing. I mean, you would have had to work really hard and put out a ton of videos and spend hours and hours doing what I've done. But I don't think that like I'm super special in a way. I think I've been given an, an opportunity to do something really cool also because I've worked hard, but I want to use it for good. You know, I want to use it for positive things. I don't want to, you know, get famous and just, you know, try and, you know, make myself more famous or make a bunch of money. I want to like give back and create something. And, you know, there's nothing that like, it's, I love playing the drums, but there's nothing that inspires me more than when I get an email that says like, wow, man, I saw your videos and I went out and I bought a kit. And now I, I like to play drums too. It's like, you know, the idea that I inspired one person to play the drums and it like changed their life and they enjoyed it like that. I mean, boom, if it's just one person, great. If it's yeah. two and a half million, I mean, uh, I, I can't even fathom that number. Not to say that all of them started drums because of my videos, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like sure. if it's 10 people, that's, that's so cool. Now, are you ever in a grocery store, like picking up Cheerios and some soccer mom comes down and recognizes you and says, Oh my God, thanks to you. There's no peace and quiet in my house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know if I've run into any soccer moms, uh, but uh, there's definitely been some parents that have said things. But you know, it's it's typically the kids or the you know now a lot of times it's now like teenagers or adults because they've been around my videos for a decade now basically, and so um, it's it's definitely pretty crazy every time that happens and and i'm just like wow like it's so cool to meet someone in in real life that watches the videos and shake their hand and well nowadays don't do much handshaking but you know what i'm saying <laughs> sure yeah yeah so uh, jim is a massive marvel fan tell him about that collaboration you had with steven taylor and you guys even dressed up oh yeah so steven came to me with the idea and i mean uh, it was, it was it's something that I'm very passionate about. My son's super into Spider-Man and into Marvel and he's got all those, the superheroes. And so <clears throat> That's when, my fave, Spider-Man. 
Yeah, man, that's the, my my son is Spider Man like ninety percent of the day. Uh, <laughs> he's got all the costumes, but he uh, Stephen came to me and he's like, "Hey, man, we we really need to like do some sort of collab when I come down that way, and we should do something that like will appeal to a wide range of people and get kids excited and also get you know teens and stuff and even the adult in us, the, the little the kids inside of the adults that we are, like we all you know we all love Marvel and stuff. And so uh, I I was like, heck yeah, let's do it. Let's get the costume and like he got his uh symbols custom painted by zildjian to their, to be like uh, to be captain america's shield and i designed my uh my drum set i used a pearl crystal beat with drum light inside of it and then i designed a rack that went all the way around me so i was like inside of this like i, I called it like my drum suit you know it was like i was iron man, <laughs> inside iron man's suit and it was really difficult to play in that in the suits that we had on you, we couldn't see you couldn't really grip the sticks and then the way I set up that kit it was so tight on me I was hitting symbols like this like just really I mean you can't you can't see it if you're on podcast but I'm, I'm just yeah, making yeah. goofy uh goofy arm uh, and you guys cranked symbols. out a bunch of different stuff I guess right doing the, uh, a couple different videos or just the one uh there are a few the different videos goes. in the series uh we did like a drum solo kind of thing with it and just kind of messed around a few times but the main one was uh was like a, a redo of the Avengers theme right we need to get rich to uh, and just sit down and watch all twenty three movies because uh, <laughs> it's quite go. resistant. No, I and, need. Uh, I do need to do that. This is the time in the, the in the world that that. that I sent the, the I sent the viewing order to Kara, and mm -hmm. did you guys not start it? Or well, there's so many other good things. Right now, we're on Shit's you, Creek with yeah, you, okay. Eugene you get, Levy, and it's just awesome. You gonna watch Aliens again, or? Uh, well, I mean, I, I mean the, you know, the first Alien. 19 Sigourney Weaver 1977 1978 is my favorite I mean there's there's no CGI it's just a dude in a suit just lumbering around with Jerry Goldsmith's music and it's so creepy it holds up so well wow what you need to do rich is you yeah. need to uh watch all 23 of those movies back to back to back to back and live stream yourself watching all 23 of those movies and like That's a live good idea. live commentary live tweet and uh just you know by the end of it you're like you can't keep your eyes open anymore but it's a, it's an impressive feat and uh you, you know you get all the the follows and the likes and the well the man well you know Why i asked we... you i asked you one time for some great business advice because you know i think for for less you know aging rockers like myself it's always good to have something on a finger on the pulse with the youth and you started populating your page what in 2011 yeah so uh 2011 was when i really started to put out videos all the time i had a few like let me show uh grandma and my parents a video for my talent show kind of thing like dating back to like 2007 but 2011 was when i was like all right you know I, I've played in a bunch of bands. And I don't think any of those bands are going to really take me where I want to go. So people tell me after every show that I'm fun to watch. Let's see if I'm fun to watch and yeah. make videos. And so, uh, yeah, so it's almost, I'm coming up on the, the 10 year anniversary of, uh, of my YouTube channel. Do you like, do anything really special? Brilliant. I don't know. I haven't even thought of it. So now that I'm thinking about it, I'll, I'll have to think of something special for sure. Now, what is the thing on the wall, the plaque, the play button? Like, how do you, how do you earn that? So the, the gold subscribers, button right? is uh, that one is for 1 million subscribers. Uh, yeah, you get one. Million. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, there, there is one. I thought it was a hundred thousand. That, that's the silver play button. And that comes at a hundred thousand. Uh, I actually never got mine, which I was pretty, uh, I was huh. pretty devastated by that. But once I got the gold play button, it was kind of like, well, okay, I guess I'll forgive them for not sending my silver. But uh, I definitely, you know, I wish I had it so I could display it somewhere. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm looking at your Instagram. You know, your Instagram following is nothing to balk at either. 170,000 people. Love it. Look yeah, at you. Uh, you, you, you were like giving me place. some advice. You know, I'm, uh, you were giving me some advice one time. Like, okay, so you got this product, Rich, drummingintheminerworld.com. You spent all this money on it, and this is how you can get more eyeballs in front of it. And, I, man, I have experimented so much with that over the years. I finally settled on a number that seems to work with people that's not offensive because we got to remember, like, drummers, I mean, it's like there's two – Vert people in the music business either you're struggling or you're doing incredibly well and the <laughs> middle is 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 like a wasteland right so i yeah. finally settled on like 99 bucks 
for five and a half hours of material and you have it and you could stream it for the rest of your life. And, and it's so interesting. It's, I don't think it's the kind of mailbox money you get, but it's like, oh, wow, I just sold two today. And that's cool. That's going to cover my doctor bill or my groceries this month, you know? It's, yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. I mean, I, I think that's a good price point for, I mean, you know, you, you, the worth is not necessarily what people are able to pay. And you understand that because sure. I mean, otherwise you could charge $999 for it. And to get into side Rich Redmond's head and understand what it takes to, to play the way that you play and to, to be the, you know, the artist that you are, that's, that's worth that kind of money. But like, like you said, you know, finding that place where people can actually get their hands on it. And uh, that's certainly like, to me, that's a price point that, um, you know, if I was super interested in, in Rich Redmond and, and getting something uh, out of your brain like that, I, that's a bargain. So oh, man. Uh, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's really cool when someone buys something that, that you create and like, or that you, you know, that not only supports you, but also like hopefully helps them. That's, that's the cool thing about lesson packs and education things and like the sites and all that is like, you know, it's your way of giving back in a way and also their way of giving and supporting the artists that, that, uh, that they love because like, especially on YouTube, like, you know, people think that, um, all YouTubers are just rolling around in millions of dollars and stuff. But like when it's a music YouTube channel, a lot of times, most of that money isn't going to the YouTuber. It's going to the record labels and, and things of that nature. And so, um, it's definitely one of those things where if you, uh, if you watch someone and you enjoy them, you know, if they have something that a value to offer, like, like yourself having a lesson pack or, a you know, a, a lesson series, that's something that you should definitely pick up and, and appreciate the, the artist for sure. Wow. Well, well, so, so you're basically saying like when you do covers and your, if your YouTube channel is all covers, you're not able to monetize that because the intellectual property belongs to a record label or a songwriter. So the other offerings on your page, whether it be collaborations, lessons, how to's, that's really what you can monetize from the views, right? Yeah. So if it, if I own all of the content inside the video and there's no copyright claim on the, the audio, then I do get to, to make a small amount from, from each view. Um, unfortunately, you know, a large portion of the views on the channel are on the drum covers, which is not unfortunate in the fact that like the drum covers are what people want to watch. And that's what inspires people to get behind a kid a lot of times. But, you know, as far as creating revenue from what it is that I do, it is unfortunate that those videos that I work very hard on do not produce revenue, you know? And so it's, that's one of the biggest things about being a drummer and trying to operate a channel like that. You really have to balance. I always tell people like, do it because you love it. Don't do it because you want to make money from it. Because, you know, if you're trying to start a YouTube channel, or if you're trying to, you know, start an Instagram page or something, and your first thought is like, how can I make money off of this? Then most likely you're not going to get anywhere with it because you're going to get real, um, you're going to, frustrated. Uh, frustrated. Yeah. Frustrated. <laughs> or, you're, you know, you're going to, you're going to feel real bad when it doesn't work out and you're not making the money that you want to make right away. And so, um, it's certainly one of those things where like, for me, I don't do it for the money. I do it because I love it. You know, I, at the end of the day, if I can put a, a roof over my head playing drums and I can support my family, like that's all, like, I don't need a Ferrari out front. I don't need, like, I drive a 2006 minivan right now and it's got 260,000 miles on it. Now it's a lot cheaper. You ain't got no, uh, no car payment or anything. Yeah. like that on a vehicle like that and so no, I try you got a beautiful house and a beautiful uh studio and a beautiful family i mean i love your setup man and congratulations it's like when my drummer friends and we say we talk like this is the house that drums built we all own homes from the sweat of our brow drums built this house it's like wow i mean like yeah. drink that in because being a homeowner is the american dream and you're i mean look at that beautiful place man Congratulations! oh yeah I'm, i i love it it's i mean this is like i put like pretty much every dime i've made into creating this studio and in this house and you know just having a place to do what i love and to bring people like yourself out so that we can all you know play drums and, and do what we love and create cool content for sure Jimbo, you gonna say something? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I did. I had something on the tip of my tongue. Jim is like, uh, is is like, he's got three computer screens open. He's taking show notes. He's researching videos. So busy that I am. <laughs> uh, do you feel the pressure? Like, the, when does it become more of a pressure to come up with content versus inspiration? That's something I've always had trouble overcoming when I was in radio. Yeah. So 
Uh, I mean, there's definitely a pressure because people want to see what they want to see. And then if you aren't providing that or like, you know, if I have to pay the bills, like right now in this whole COVID situation, like I'm having to focus more on the things that actually create revenue than on the stuff that I'd like to be focusing on because a lot of the revenue that I normally make has disappeared. And so I haven't been putting out as many videos as I want. I haven't been able to create a lot of the content that I normally would create that doesn't create revenue for me. And so there's a lot of people that are like, oh, hey man, where's the drum covers? and where's this and where's that and like i get it you know they, they want to see that and i want to provide it but yeah. you know if it's not paying for my food that goes into my mouth and my my family's you know support then if i have to focus on something else i have to focus on something else and so it is like i think the the pressure of this being my job and my business is certainly uh, pulled back on the enjoyment factor and the, like just the straight creative and inspirational factor that I used to have when like I didn't do this for a living and I just played and created videos because I wanted to. And so now that there's the stress of, you know, especially with a family, you know, I have two kids and I have a wife and uh, I have a mortgage and, you know, like all of that, like I got to create like? revenue. <laughs> <laughs> Jim has got a family of five and he mostly makes his living uh, producing podcasts and doing voiceovers. And so wow. that guy, he is a busy man. Hustle. Yeah, I bet. That's, yeah. Uh, and that's like, you know, you got to do it because you love it. Because if you don't love it, uh, then you're really going to have a hard time trying to provide for yourself and continue to work hard because it's, you know, it's a grind. But I mean, I, help, I think that helps when you've done something you don't love for a while. Mm. You know, yeah. I always tell people that when I was, oddly enough, one of the companies that I'm a partner in is an electrical company, but I was an electrician at one point and I hated getting up in the morning. Mm. And once you have a taste of that, man, whenever you find, I just want to do something I love because I don't want to get, I don't want that feeling ever again. Yeah. I, I used to wake up at like three every morning to work on my studio because I built my studio by hand and uh, I actually, Easy. I learned all the different, uh, the different trades so I could do it because that way I could keep the cost down. Electrical is one of my favorite, uh, favorite portions of it. Really? Uh, not to say that like, Hey, I don't, that's, that's a bit of a commute, but uh, that is a big commute. <laughs> it's uh, not to say that I enjoy waking up early either, but I was up at uh, 4 a.m. this morning helping my brother in law out with a bathroom remodel, and I was actually doing all the electrical portion this morning. So it's all the oh. rough in. Yeah, you're running all the Romex and all that fun stuff, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I actually did uh, for my studio, I did the uh, uh, the metal. Uh, I just forgot the, the name of the it. The studs. Uh, yeah, yeah, metal studs and metal, mm. uh, metal electrical. Uh, MX MC yeah. cable. Yeah, yep, that, that stuff was trying to pull that stuff at oh, three yeah. in the morning when my child's sleeping upstairs. That was <laughs> that was harder than playing drums for eight hours straight. You know, makes a little <laughs> yeah. bit of noise. Yeah, for real. Wow. Well, you know, last night uh, I went to bed. Um, at 3 a.m. and I got up at 9, but just like, we you know, like there's a lot of parents that are like, 9 a.m. on a Monday? Are you kidding me? We're up at 6 every day because my kid wants cereal. And, you know, so it's like, God bless you guys, man, the early, those early mornings. Yeah. Okay. There's, How old are your kids? Uh, I have a, a new eight-month-old daughter, and then I have an almost four-year-old. Oh, yeah. yeah you're, you're in the beginning of the book. Yes. Yeah. Lots of, <laughs> lots of early mornings. And, uh, even like, you know, tomorrow I'll probably want to sleep in because I well, woke up so early today, but won't happen. Here's a picture I just took. I came across this in my uh, memories on Facebook. Um, it was actually, I, I had a pension of taking pictures of the back of my kid's head. Yeah. 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 So that's that, that's okay. Hallie when she was, uh, probably, I don't know, about five or six months old. Yep. And, uh, she had your haircut. Yeah. <laughs> and I did this side by side. She was sitting on my lap. We were camping on Friday. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. And it says eight years later, man. Time does fly. It's crazy. Oh man, don't don't do yeah. that to me, bro. <laughs> yeah, it flies, I'm dude. Eight months in, and I'm like, where's where's my one month old? Yeah, they're different, <laughs> man. They, it's a, yeah. it's life is like a roll of toilet paper. But my uh, my three year old, <laughs> it goes faster the more you get to the end. Gotcha. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't even know where that was going, but uh, I was just going to say my, my three-year-old son, he's, uh, he loves drums. And uh, for his third birthday, he got a little Pearl Roadshow Jr. kit. And he, as uh, not surprising, dressed up as Spider-Man and played drums. Uh, I got a Spider-Man decal for the front of the drum set. And nice. uh, certainly uh, he's like, I got a Spider-Man drum set. He told everybody. Yeah. So, well, let me ask you, did you attract any of the, uh, alumnus from the marvel movies at all with those videos some of the actors no i haven't seen any uh any posts or anything unfortunately no, i wish i could 
Yeah, yeah because Don Cheadle radar. plays drums. Don Cheadle plays drums. Robert Mark Downey Ruffalo sings. Mark Ruffalo might play a little drums. I don't know. Um, I don't know but, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, cross pollination with with actors and drummers. So if somebody was going to start a YouTube channel, what is the what are what are some of the hacks that you're comfortable giving away? Like, how often do you need to post? Once a day? Twice a week? Certain times? How does that work? So, I mean, I, I'm willing to give away anything that I can give away to help people because I, you know, I, I believe that having a, uh, having a successful like social media page is a good way to get your name out there. And also a mm. good way to, even if you don't have a bunch of followers, it's a great video resume for yourself for other musicians. So creating high quality content of your own playing, I believe is, is a win, whether or not you become famous in air quotes here, um, yeah. or if you just create great content that you can share with a band or share with someone else and get a studio gig. But anyway, if you're trying to start a YouTube channel, one thing, uh, I mean, it really boils back down to making sure that you're doing it because you love it not because you want to, you know, make a million dollars a year next year, because that's not going to happen unless you get really lucky or something blows up. Uh, but like to what, the, the really thing that you have to do is you have to find what it is that makes your content special. What is it that you have that someone else doesn't have, or wh what is it that you, that is you. Because if you try and do something like someone else is doing something, most likely, you know, it's just going to get lost in it. Because, you know, if I tried to play drums like uh, Quibus or Cobus, as many of you know, like it just wouldn't work. Or if I tried to play like Luke Holland, or if I tried to play like Rich, you know, like it just, it wouldn't, I, I wouldn't get there. You know, I have to find what it is that, that is me. And that's, you know, the, the crazy stick twirls and the, the, the big arms and just like having fun, the big smile on my face. Like that's the kind of thing that was me and is me. And, uh, but after that, um, really, I mean, building a channel, you want to have as much content as possible. Um, now I won't tell you that you have to post every day. Like I did for my first three months, I posted a hundred videos in the first, like basically three, four months of my YouTube channel wow. uh, because I wanted to flood the market. I wanted people to find me everywhere that they could find me. If they searched for this new song, they would find a dr my drum cover. If they searched for this genre of music, they would find my drum cover. Uh, and that's really like, I mean, that's still great advice. The more content you have, the better there's a chance that someone finds it. And yeah. more importantly, if someone finds a video of yours and they decide they want to watch more videos of yours, if you have more videos, then instead of getting one view, you get 10 views. Or instead of getting you know two views, you get 20 views. So having a content catalog is really, really important. Uh, and a lot of people will say like quality is more important than quantity. Uh, and I disagree with that. I think uh, quantity is just as important as quality because yeah, maybe you have one really awesome video. So like, say you have a budget of a thousand dollars to hire a videographer and pay for a studio or whatever, and you decide to shoot one video like, okay. But if that video isn't pushed by YouTube's, uh, uh, their, the way that they like share the recommended videos next mm -hmm. to your video their and, algorithms. Like, yeah. Their algorithms. Yeah. If that doesn't work, then, you've just spent a thousand dollars on one video and it didn't really do anything. Now, not to say that you need to spend that money. I think that you should learn all of the different sides of it that you can to keep that in house so that you can produce content yourself. Like we were talking about the zoom Q2N earlier today, uh, before we really got started, that's a 4k camera and a stereo microphone all in one. That camera is like 250 bucks. You buy that camera, you can create great Instagram content. You can create great YouTube content and it, does it all for you. You literally just move the files over. You could add a title or you could add an effect or something if you wanted, but it's already a completed great sounding video if you set the gain right. But the, the, the further point of that is just the fact that if you can create content that sounds good and looks good, maybe it doesn't look like, you know, a $5,000 movie shoot, but uh, <laughs> it looks like, you know, like a Zoom Q2N and you produce great content with that and you have a bunch of those videos, that to me is more valuable than having one really well shot or really you know crazy video or something where you drag yourself up to a mountain and you put all this effort into it. Because it, it a lot of times that can be a letdown if it doesn't blow up and you put all that effort in there. But if you create a bunch of videos and you're on top of the trends, so like whatever song comes out, you got to be the first one to jump on it and play drums because someone's going to search for that song and search for, uh, for the drums, a drum cover drum of cover. that song. And if you're the first mm -hmm. one, then, then you're, you're the one that they're going to find. And that's how I really, I mean, a huge part of the success of my channel was like, I would check iTunes top charts the morning 
like 6 a.m. I would see what song's there. I would jump behind the drum set. I'd record the video. I'd edit the video. I'd post the video same day. And so, I mean, a lot of times my video would be popping up next to the music video because our our videos launched at the same time and there's no other videos of that yet. Um, And then another big thing is just uh, finding something that's new. So, you know, like Steven and I did the Marvel thing, not to say no one's done that before, but like we did it up. And that is an example of a time where like, we didn't put a thousand dollars into that video. We, you know, we bought 50 bucks worth of costumes each. And we like, you know, we set up our drum sets. It took extra time to do all that, but like that wasn't a high budget production, but it was us going the extra mile to create something that hadn't really been done before and do it in a really, really cool way. And um, that kind of like, being creative, being unique, finding a new niche. Like I set my drumsticks on fire. Not to say that you should do that. And if you're a child watching this or listening (laughs) to this, don't go setting anything on fire. But, you know, I also play drums with a basketball. That's one of my favorite videos I've created. I play, it's called All I Do Is Win. And like, I played a bass drum with a basketball and shot it and it was like basketball themed. Like, not to say that that's what you have to do for your channel. You don't have to be a goofy idiot like me, but you do have to be something different. If you just try and do the same thing everyone else is doing, most likely you'll just fall into the hundreds of thousands of videos and get lost. Perfect. Man, I, I, well, I mean, when, we, when we get off the air, work. I'm definitely going to ask you about that Zoom camera because Jim and I are Zoom artists and I think we have the, the next thing we need to uh, be begging for. <laughs> yes. Oh, for real. Yeah. I have two of them because I the video? The- what was the video that blew up for you? The first video that, that you know, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about you, that one video that will actually launch you into the stratosphere. Wasn't Which that the was Skrillex the thing? Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. Good memory, Rich. So uh, when I was uh, a sophomore in uh, college, it was, or maybe it, it might've been, uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. I, I created a uh, dubstep. Dubstep was the big thing right then. And Skrillex was, was everything. And so I actually built a lot of my viewers for a while doing drum covers of dubstep. I was one, one of the only guys doing that. And so like, that was one of those niche, like new things that I was like, this is going somewhere. I'm going to play drums to dubstep. And a lot of those videos have over a million views, which <laughs> for, for my earlier on in my channel, that was, that was not necessarily like something that I got to, but the first video that blew up was also dubstep. It was Skrillex, Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites. It was like his biggest hit, but we took that and we were unique and we were creative and we played it on vibraphone, marimba, cajon and bass guitar. And no one like no one had ever seen that before. Like that, like what in the world? Like dubstep on like melodic percussion? Like that sounds stupid, but it actually sounded pretty cool. Uh, and more importantly, someone posted it on Reddit and they were like uh, a very interesting version of Skrillex, Scary Monsters and Ice Sprites or something because, and then that it blew up on Reddit and then it was on the front page of YouTube and we got about a million hits in, in a day. My, my favorite memory from that was going into class at Georgia State uh, that day. And like, I was, I was riding high. I got like two hours of sleep because I was up all night watching that thing just skyrocket in views. But uh I uh, I went and sat down in class and I looked down and there were three people in front of me on their laptops watching the video in that class, not realizing that the person that shot the video was behind them in the class. And so nice. that was my first like, oh man, I'm sort of like, I I'm arrived. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> oh my God. Well, that is fantastic. And I don't want to break up this conversation, but we're going to take a quick break and be right back. The Rich Redmond Show. We'll be right back. Henry Ford once said that if you need a machine and don't buy it, then you will ultimately find that you have paid for it and don't have it. Nothing could be truer about energy-efficient LED lighting in your business. At Big Dot Lighting, we can show you how a portion of your savings from a commercial LED lighting upgrade will be paid for in hardly any time at all. Until then, you're paying for them anyway. Book a no-cost lighting energy assessment with Big Dot Lighting. At least 30% of your utility bill is waiting to be saved. Go to BigDotLighting.com. This is the Rich Redman Show. Jim, you had something on the tip of your tongue. Yes. Uh, so far, um, my fanboyish of boyish boyishness of Casey <laughs> is uh, is growing, being that he's a Marvel fan. But I would take it he's also an Office fan because you have a story oh, yes. about having uh, a little bit of a close encounter with one of those actors as well. Correct. Yes, that is very correct. Office is, I mean, my all-time favorite TV show. Um, there's, I mean, I, I just, 
Yeah, I could watch it. Can I ask over you, and over and over? Who's your again. favorite character? Who are your two favorite characters on the show? Uh, Jim and Pam. Thanks. So. Really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Michael, but who who are your favorite characters? I was, uh, you know, in the beginning, I wasn't too much of a fan of Dwight, but he certainly won me over. So Dwight oh, yeah. and Kevin. Okay. All right. Kevin. Kevin is an underrated actor on that on that that show, but he's hilarious. What was the movie that Dwight was in? He would play a drummer, like an aging drummer, and he was playing the rocker. Uh, with the yeah, the rocker. rocker. Yeah, that was a good movie. I mean, he's a great actor for sure. <laughs> he is. He Man. was also on. Uh, he was on um, Six Feet Under. Oh, okay, remember that show on HBO? Oh, yeah, I mean HBO. Yeah. God, you cannot go wrong. I mean, it's like you pull any of their series; it's just world class. So well done. We're on a re rewatching Silicon Valley right now. Nice. nice. We should be okay. watching Marvel, not rewatching. Oh, stop. Okay, so Kaser was going to tell us a story. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot I was supposed to tell the story. So, uh, <laughs> it it was it was kind of one of those moments where you're like, you just you you look at yourself and you're like, what what have I become? Where where did this? How did this happen? And uh, I was on Twitter and uh, I got a uh, all of a sudden a verified tweet came in, and I'm verified, but I'm not like you know cool verified. I'm just like verified because. I don't even know why I got verified. But anyway, what I'm saying is like, you know, you get, you get a tweet from somebody that's, that's famous and you're like, Oh, this is so crazy. And you check it out. Well, the, the tweet was from Jenna Fisher. Uh, it was actually a message. It wasn't a tweet. Uh, but uh, I clicked on it and she's like, Hey, my, uh, I hope that this isn't weird. And like, first off, I'm thinking to myself, like, this is, there's, uh, you could reach this is out. So and, weird. Yeah. So weird. So <laughs> weird. You're reaching out. No, but, uh, she said like, my son is a, a young drummer and he loves your videos. And, uh, you know, I just, I wanted to say like, you know, thank you for your videos and stuff. And so I was just like, I was blown away, but, um, we talked a little bit more and, uh, she found out that I was going to be in LA. Uh, I was coming out for NAM. Uh, so I fly into LA and hang out there for a bit. And then I go to Anaheim for the, sh- for the NAM show. And she was like, well, Hey, why don't you, uh, come over, uh, bring your family at the time I had, uh, it was just, uh, my wife and, um, and she's like, you know, bring, bring your wife and, uh, we'll, we'll head out to, to the house and, uh, you can play drums with my son and we can have dinner and stuff. And I'm just like, nice. so what? And so we went over there and like, we had dinner and, uh, I mean, she cooked dinner and she was like, you know, she was like, I, I hope you like it. I hope you like it. And I'm like, I, I, yeah, it's great. Like, I can't believe you're like, you know, where you could have gotten like subway. I don't really like, care. Was yeah, she a good cook? I, I, yeah, it was great. Uh, what'd she make? It was good food. I, I knew you were about to ask me that, and I, I cannot, I cannot remember what she made right at this moment. All I can remember is the conversations and how like she was Pam in real life. Like, not to say that she was like, you know, she was super quirky or anything. She was just like so nice and so just like you know Pam and like Pam. Uh, it was yeah, just just like Pam on the show. It was, it was so crazy. It felt like we were you know just just hanging out um, you know as friends or something. And uh, one of the coolest things is she has the watercolor of the office that was on the wall. She has that at her house in in LA. And so, That's awesome. Um, I got to got to see that, and uh, she actually she is in my vlog. Like I did a vlog from there, and she's I was I asked her I was like, hey, you know I know this is crazy, feel free to say no, but would you like to like say something to my viewers in my vlog? And she's like, yeah. And so I'm like filming the camera of just me with open space, and I'm like, so there's someone I want you to to meet, and she jumps in and like starts talking, and it just I, I couldn't believe. Nice. It. How much yeah. time did you spend with them? Uh, a few hours. A few hours. Yeah, and played drums with their son. It was really cool. Yeah. So he was I he did, was enamored by you, I would imagine. Yeah, and we did. Oh. I did the little fire drumming thing for him as well. <laughs> wow, is he cool. still playing? Uh, I think so. Uh, she cool. actually she reached out again not too long ago, asking about uh, about how to get drumless tracks to play drums to for her son. So yeah, I what are the options on that? Stuff. Isn't there some new uh, th- offerings out there with some guys that have some shed tracks? I guess they call them or. Yeah, there's there's things like that out there, and then sometimes you can. Uh, my my suggestion is going on YouTube and finding the uh, Guitar Hero backing tracks without the drums. Uh, you Ow. can find those, and so like a lot of the songs on Guitar Hero, you can actually find with no drums in it, um, and uh, you can put those. Uh, you can play along to them and stuff. It's really cool. Can you download them, or you just have to play with them with the video? Well, I mean, you can you can download them. Uh, I, I don't know if it's like you know. Sub- 
it, there's it's a gray area you know you have to use one of those sites that's like youtube download or whatever and uh i there's definitely frowned upon because those sites disappear very very often for copyright infringement wow <laughs> so drumless tracks for the guitar hero stuff wow yeah yeah crazy that was crazy well that is an amazing story jim what feels, is the feels so random doesn't it it's completely random and so random. i'm so excited we even have a jingle for this portion of the show the random question of the day Yes. Now, let me mark down the time of that. We have a question of the day, which is... Da, 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 da. What's the timing, Mayor Buddy? Uh, it's going to be about, a, about an hour and five minutes. So five. Is it like a random question generator? You know, it's funny you mention that. Um, let's come back. I'll describe exactly... Um, yes, <laughs> but, but you're the first person to actually, you know, well, let's get back into it. You got it. It's that time completely random. The random question of the day. So Rich, so up until now, uh, I've actually been going to this website. I'm not going to tell you what it is, uh, dot com. And, uh, basically just picking out a question, I guess at quote random, but I've never noticed that this actual website has got a random question generator. Wow. Oh. It's the random question, random question, random question of the day. Congratulations, Casey. You are truly getting a random question. <laughs> yes. Great. All right. Here we go. I hope it's not inappropriate. <laughs> oh, let me pre-read it here. Hold on. No, you're good. Here we go. <laughs> if all your memories were erased, what kind of person would you be? Oh man. Uh, well, if all my memories were erased, uh, I might not be, I might not love music as much as I do now because, well, you know, it's a lot of my memories and like growing up with my dad, listening to, to tracks in the, the car, that was like, you know, how I became involved in music. But I guess I would, if I would probably be someone who uh, really just likes to to work hard. I, I find that to be like my, like I'm a workaholic uh, at heart and it's only because of my memories and training and growing up and like learning things that, that I'm able to like shut that off and, and be there for my family. Because otherwise, like when I was single, I'd work like 16 hours a day to produce videos and content and just like, I, I grind, I grind all the time. So right. I'd probably be a workaholic. Nice. A very eloquent I like answer. Him. I do too, man. Very so, well spoken. Very well spoken. Well, he's an educator, man. Um, <laughs> For so 28, what, you know? At, 20, at 29, actually, when this episode airs, you will have had your 29th birthday. It's your last Woo! last uh, hurrah there before you hit 30. Yeah. Well, I, I can't talk about uh, about it yet because I don't know if it's coming true. But uh, I do have some ideas for like celebrating becoming thirty, like some drum stuff. So we'll we'll see about that. I I, I would love to say it, but I, I want to make sure it's happening before I'm like, hey, <laughs> play a montage from the year you were born. Yes, there we go. I yeah. uh, I do need to do some sort of like you know greatest hits video or something for when to you were born in 1991. <laughs> Yeah. There we go. You got the year right. Yeah. You can do math. What is that? Uh, I was in 10th grade. What I was, uh, yeah, well, Jim is, uh, I'm the oldest on this Zoom meeting here. 91, uh, I was 21 and um, yeah, probably had my first beer and was playing all around Lubbock, Texas. I was in college. Nice. I, uh, I grew up in Dallas. Well, actually Arlington, Texas. Yeah, uh, Arlington, Dallas Texas. Dallas for other people, but if, since you're from Lubbock, you know Arlington, I'm sure. I love Texas. I love all the Tex-Mex. I miss it. There's like a strong support for the arts and music education in Texas. Really great state. I always love getting back um, getting back to that state. You know, I knew I forgot what I was going to tell you guys. I, I, was dry, I was on a walk today, and this is a beautiful time of the year in Nashville because it's kind of when you can kind of feel the temperature is changing, the season is changing before long. There's a little Christmas in the air. The leaves are going to start falling. It's my favorite time of year in Nashville. And I was walking past this giant church, and out on the lawn they had this um, – like an audio board, you know, at front of house and it was covered. And I just said to my, there was a stage and I was walking by saying, man, I cannot wait to get out there. I mean, I would move my drums today, set up and play brown eyed girl <laughs> and old time rock and roll. And I would love it. Even if there's three people out in the audience, I can't wait to get back to this. 
Yeah, that's, I mean, it's so, I play at church, so I do get to play, you know, almost every Sunday, but that's, you know, besides that and playing in the studio and stuff, like I haven't played with musicians in <laughs> so long and it's, it's sad. There's nothing like that live interaction of a live band on stage and getting that feedback from the audience and people are clapping on one and three and biting their upper lip and, and chatting with each other and doing their version of the chicken dance. I, I mean, I will take it every time. So what, what is, uh, tell everybody where you, you like to be found, obviously, on the internet. What are the best places for people to find you? Uh, I mean, my YouTube channel and uh, my Instagram, if you want to be like, you know, a... Uh, a real in-depth follower and you want to see my life and you want to see what I'm up to all the time. Instagram is, is my, my home. That's where I post my pictures. That's where I like, I mostly respond to like messages and I, I do occasionally respond to emails if I can, but I have 33,000 unread emails. So it, I get a little, uh, get a little bogged down there. Uh, but like Instagram, I, you know, I, I also like in, during this COVID time, I've actually been, um, finding like really awesome deals on drum sets and like buying them and putting new heads on them and cleaning them up and making them sound wow. really nice and recording videos on them and like uh, selling the drum sets and then people get to come and pick up the kit and like get to to meet me and stuff. And so wow. it's been a fun little like way to get awesome deals to people who follow me and also make a little bit of extra money on the side and uh, just also have really cool drum sets coming in my studio almost every single day. Like I, I have like 10 drum sets just laying everywhere now I, I have to I need to clean up but that's an yeah, incredible idea that's really smart it's uh it's it's fun I like, uh, you know there's like we were talking about earlier like export kits and vision kits like you know things like that where like people you know play them and, and they're done with them and now I can buy them put some great heads on them tune them and some kid can be really happy with a kit that sounds awesome you know and Instagram is where I do that because that's you know that's where I mostly interact with people and uh, then I met a lot of people through this uh, in the past few months that have come by and get they visit the studio and they they play drums with me and uh, it's it's a really fun experience Wow. Gosh. Did, now, was I was I right in hearing that you said you have thirty three thousand unread emails? Yeah, I'm pretty bad about that. That's it. Wow. Yeah. So, what do you do? Just we'll take one long weekend and just like make a pot of coffee and then just start hacking away. Well, my problem is that I, uh, if I think that like I sometimes I read an email and I think like, oh, I'd really love to respond to that, but uh, I can't right now. So then I mark it as unread. And to save it. And then I delete like my red emails. And so like, it's just, I mean, I know I'll never catch up and I, you know, I value my family uh, as much as I value the people who watch my videos, my family comes first. And so, you know, I can't spend three hours a day reading emails and responding to emails. So, for you. you know, it's, uh, I only, I respond if it's like a really awesome, you know, like really important thing. But if it's, you know, a lot of times the emails that they, they get, they get lost if it's not a, uh, you know, really pressing issue. <laughs> wow. Nice. Incredible, man. Well, I think you have some amazing ideas and I love everything you're doing and congratulations on half a billion views. I mean, that Thank is you. just a wonder, wonderful thing. And being a, a torchbearer for music education and moving our craft forward. And you're such a nice guy and you're so approachable and I couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. So thanks for spending this time with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. And, uh, you know, just thank you for for inspiring people, you know, like that's, that's one of the reasons when you reached out to me, I was like, yeah, I definitely want to be a part of the podcast because you are someone who is going the extra mile, you and Jim to inspire people and to create something that, that helps. And uh, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, you know, man, I love this. Well, um, happy early birthday and Thank hopefully you. we will see you before your 30th. And if you do that big collaboration thing again, this time I'll bring my rhythm tech or my LP Cyclops tambourine and I'll play 16th behind all the drummers. I'll just be like, there we go. Can I just show up and watch? I'll just be the guy. I could just play, but I don't know if you, I don't know. I'm not that famous. So <laughs> <laughs> Jim's got a nice welcome, natural feel. Tim. Hey. Jim's got an incredible feel. He really does. He's like, I bet I can play Hicktown. He just sat down. And he's like, doo, doo, doo. and he's just off to the races. Oh, man. Speaking of tambourine, real quick, uh, if you've never watched, I keep seeing them pop up on my Facebook feed, but people who are really amazing at maracas and record it for Latin music, oh, my gosh, some of the, like, the moves and stuff yeah. that they yeah. do to get those sounds, like, I, I am just, I can't stop watching. I watch, like, the full five minutes every single time one of those videos pops up because it's just so intriguing. Go find wow. it. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of like a, is tough. 
Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I play the tambourine more. Uh, I play the maracas more like, you know, Mick Jagger and just kind of hold it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like this, you hold That's it awesome. underneath. Well, yeah, or you can get like three or four of them and you tie a bandana around them and you got three in one hand and three in the other and you just, you just kind of own it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's awesome. really fun. Well, this is an amazing conversation, and um, I'm definitely uh, hope to keep in touch over the years. Stay safe, all the listeners, guys. We appreciate it, man. Jim and I just doing this week after week. You know, be sure to subscribe, share, rate, review. We really appreciate it. Big thanks to the School of Rock, and we'll see you guys next time. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com.